Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Good afternoon and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. Uh, we are coming at you on November 27th. So it's uh, uh, we're right after the day after Thanksgiving here in the United States. And a lot of still crazy election results trying to sift through. Uh, it sounds like Biden's probably there, but we'll get into all that uh, as we come up on the uh, episode. But before we do that, let me introduce you to our panel. Up in our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon the Word Brathwaite, last word in liberty, he is a retired engineer from the state of California. Up in our right-hand corner, we have our Screaming Eagle of Freedom, Tim Everett, who is a pilot in the state of California. And my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. Um, and also, too, at the beginning of the show, I just kind of want to remind people that if you have questions or comments uh, and the show is being done uh, live, then please send those to counterpoint at libertariancounterpoint.com. Also, too, we'd love to be able to get feedback from people who may have had interesting issues with COVID lockdowns or uh, you know, they, the government, uh, you know, stepping on their businesses or perhaps, uh, you know, riots damaging their businesses. And if you're a Cal person considering leaving California, we'd love to interview you as well on the show. So if you could send any of that to counterpoint at libertariancounterpoint.com. Uh, and we will certainly consider any of that. Okay, so let's jump into the show. Uh, we have, uh, it's the day after Thanksgiving, and um, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, you know, like I said, uh, elections haven't really been completely finalized. They've kind of said it's Joe Biden, but there's still a lot of legal challenges. Um, but, uh, you know, l let's uh, talk about Thanksgiving a little bit, too. You know, that's uh, a kind of an interesting holiday uh, for a lot of reasons, uh, that was when the pilgrims came to the uh, uh, to the New World, and they, they were trying to get by in this uh, you know sort of harsh environment, and uh, you know it was kind of a tough time, and they weren't making it at first. And one of the interesting lessons that came out of that was that part of the reason they weren't making it is because they had sort of a commons type of system where everybody was just sort of ordered what to do and they had to share everything and it wasn't working and they were kind of starving to death and um you know kind of the lost story in that is that the governor of that colony told them, let's go to private property rights i mean he started assigning people lots essentially that they were responsible for and things got better and that's kind of one of the hidden stories of of thanksgiving that you probably don't learn in school but uh you know, it, it's it's kind of one of those stories about how these, you know, I guess we have thankful that these guys actually figured out, hey, look, private property rights are important. Do you guys have any thoughts on the Thanksgiving holiday or that particular lesson in, in uh, you know, property rights and markets? Yeah, I'm just wondering what property rights brought us to this day and time right here, uh, the day after Thanksgiving, and we're working for free. It's not bad enough that I had to get up at oh dark 30 and go haul freight around. I, I, I don't even get a day off from podcasting. I just, I, I don't know. I, I have a bone to pick about that. <laughs> Damn, you should have raised the red flag earlier in the week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You ready, Tim? You uh, ready, Tim? Yeah. I mean, you know yeah. what I one of the things about property rights is about responsibility. I mean, you're going to raise the red flag and then the rest I, of us can see it. I, sh I should have exercised some property rights uh, uh, to my little iPad here and my you know, my equipment or something. I don't know. But I, here we are. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll try and give you a bonus of a little bit of extra time. We'll try and push your way. <laughs> Maybe we'll have an overtime yeah. session just for you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, Tim could, yeah. so Tim could pick his bone. So, Tim yeah. Could pick his bone. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Exactly. So, bone. Well, you know, I, um, socialism and these communal these communal societies is a mirage and they have always failed because they promote this concept of equality. And there's no such thing. There's no such thing as equality. People are different in every aspect of their lives. 
And the only thing that brings about prosperity to any society is a voluntary exchange between people who have developed some specializations through their own skills or through their own training. And this is the, the failure in that, commu that community that of uh, the pilgrims when they first came about. Yes, they went to socialism. Maybe they didn't call it socialism because Karl Marx hasn't yet hadn't yet written his damn nonsense. But they went to uh, the socialist system. But socialism always produces one thing, and they're very good at producing it. It is misery. It is misery for the people who are participating in it. And this is exactly what happened to the pilgrims. And until they learn the lesson of property rights and the responsibility for taking care of those property rights, they did not prosper. And this is a failure of understanding that is continuing even today. Look at China. China was this big socialist utopia until the misery came and now they're trying to make some reforms and, and, and they call it reforms. But what are the reforms they're making? Is capitalism repackaged. That's all they're doing. They're now they're in the process of destroying Hong Kong, which was one of the most capitalist societies, most prosperous societies in, in the world. And now they're destroying Hong Kong because now they're going to impose the Chinese way on Hong Kong. Right? Hong Kong was given up by the British in um, 1997. But socialism produces one thing and produces a lot of it, misery. And we can't get away from that fact. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, the only thing I could add is uh, that I, I think for the people on the other side of the fence that look at people that are maybe not the hardest workers or the most talented or, or the, um, uh, the healthiest or, or the, you know, the handsomest and the ones with the nicest uh, gray beards and so on that are, uh, that was for you, Leon. I know. Uh, <laughs> the, I'm, I'm, um, I'm surprised you didn't add retired, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, um, the thing is that, that they're thinking, well, well, what about those people? There's gotta be a, a, a better way. And uh, I, I don't, I don't think very many people, there are a few, uh, the Ocasio-Cortez and the, uh, what's uh, the, um, the the other Democrat that keeps losing? Uh, uh, Pelosi? Bernie, Bernie Sanders. Sanders. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 Bernie Sanders, uh, you know, there's there's a few of those, that's, that's for sure. But I think a lot of people are, are just trying to uh, do some sort of transferism. That's uh, what I've been calling it. And it's uh, it's really within the capitalistic system, but they're transferring the wealth from those that make it to to those that, that don't. And, you know, they, this this is, um, is something that I, I think they, they don't see the damage that this can cause and how far it can go. Yeah. And so while they're not in in concept wishing for the uh, the government to control the means of production, they're uh, thinking of ways to to take wealth away from those that produce it and give it to those that don't. And although it's it's not technically socialism, it is still uh, capitalism with transferism, transferring wealth from those that make it to those that don't, and uh it's it's just you, you keep doing that you keep doing that kind of stuff and eventually uh because it's just top-down central planning and it eventually hurts society at, at large so i think one thing you can say about this whole idea about private property rights which is essential to capitalism is that it is the best way to just to for wealth to be distributed fairly to and broadly into a society the best way is there some people that fall through the cracks yes you can have them in every society but but the whole socialistic idea or the communal uh, top-down central planning communal property ownership concept is as leon has said it's just it's just a good way to produce misery in the economy and in the society at large. So, so that that's what I think people just don't. They need to be really careful, especially going into the next four years if it's Biden. 
is there's going to be a lot of people clamoring for more transferring of wealth from those that make it to the, those that don't. Yeah. No, no, and, certainly. And, and people, and, and the thing is that, and, and Timmy, you're so right, that this transfer that, that everybody's clamoring for, clamoring for, advocating for, people do not realize the extent to which this thing just cripples human beings. Mm -hmm. Now, there's nothing wrong with us being compassionate, okay? There are times we go through society and, you know, um, we, get through, we get in difficult moments, whether it's uh, unexpected death, whether it's uh, um, a, a, a sudden divorce or something like that. And people do go through difficult times. There's nothing wrong with society, to me, with society finding some ways to help these people get back on their feet. But this permanent welfare state or these permanent things that the government is creating, more and more creating in our lives and in our society, is doing nothing but crippling the human beings. It's it's poisoning their souls. They, 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 they just wait around for those of us who are working to produce, and they wait around to receive the benefits of our production. And this is what is so crippling about socialism and all its variations. People have different names for it, but the effect is the same. The production of misery and the poison of the souls of people and their human spirit. Well, Leon, something I wanted to jump on that you mentioned earlier as well, you tied in China to uh, this whole conversation. And and actually, we, we were having a little bit of a discussion before the podcast about uh, um, an NPR show, Planet Money. And actually, I see there's an interesting connection here. NPR had a show on, Ch on China a long time ago, which really could be labeled as China's Thanksgiving, but it was actually called The Secret Document That Transformed China. And I, I thought it would be a good point to bring this up because when China took over, uh, or I mean, when their uh, communist government took over China, uh, they had gone to a communal farming system, which is kind right. of like what the pilgrims were dealing with. It was a sort yeah. of a communal farming system. And and it was that people were starving. I mean, they didn't allow people to trade. They told people exactly when to go out into the field, exactly when to come back in, exactly what to plant. You literally had to take your orders from the central government on what you were doing. And people were starving because of it. And as people were starving, some of the people started to take a chance and stop listening to the government and start to grow extra stuff and not exactly come in when they told them to and then try to trade with some of their neighbors. And some of these people actually were risking their lives. And it, you know, because if the government found out they were doing it, well, the government eventually did find out they were doing it because everybody was starving and they weren't. That was the essentially the seed that allowed them to start for reform because they realized, hey, these guys are actually not starving and everybody else is. You know? so, so they started to allow for a little bit more control by the people on the ground over what they were planning. But that could that can almost be their Thanksgiving. And I thought that it's something if you if you're interested in a, an interesting podcast, check out that the secret document that transformed China from uh, uh, NPR's Planet Money. I wouldn't recommend NPR for everything, but that was a pretty good show. <laughs> well, yeah. There's a very interesting story about, um, not, 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 not about China, but um, about uh, the Soviet Union. You know, Mikhail Gorbachev told Margaret Thatcher that the Soviet Union produces enough food and grain and all those things to feed the people. But, one third of it rots before it gets to market. And that is why the Soviet Union had to constantly import grain and different kinds of food just to survive because they were just producing misery because of all the top-down socialism. Nobody had property rights. Nobody cared about the properties that they were working on. People were told, people were told when to go in and when to come, back, come home and all these other things. And there was this big joke, a, a Russian guy told me this, that we, um, the, the, the workers used to say, you pretend to pay us, so we pretend to work. So productivity, productivity was, was miserable, just like the misery these people were living through. So this is, this is the thing. This is the thing. You produce these big, grand schemes, and it produced nothing but misery. Always. You're very good at that. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of uh, miserable government programs, <laughs> yeah, California, again, sort of is uh, leading the headlines. This news was just breaking over the last week. Uh, but uh, apparently our unemployment uh, uh, 
uh, EDD, they call it, I, I, unemployment development. So I, I can't. Yeah, or employment. Yeah, employment. Yeah, unemployment. Employment, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> employment development. Uh, okay, well, anyways. Department. Uh, they, yeah. yeah, department. That's it. They are responsible for essentially sending out the checks to people when they're unemployed. And so with uh, a lot of this COVID stuff, uh, there's been a lot of uh, extra money that's been thrown in the system. And I guess there's been an awful lot of scandal. A lot of, turns out, prisoners of all things in prisons are literally bilking the system of close to a billion dollars. I mean, that's yeah. what uh, uh, it, it, we've heard different uh, numbers from different people. I think they're still trying to work that out. Uh, we're talking at least hundreds of millions and potentially over a billion dollars have been built by prisoners in the system, literally figuring out how to uh, draw unemployment <laughs> <laughs> they're in prison. Uh, also, uh, other people using uh, other people's identities. Well, Crazy. Can, you guys want to talk they, about it? They can always say, well, what are you going to do to me? Put me in prison? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, geez, kudos for them to find a way to build uh, the, basically the taxpayers because government has no money. So whoever they bilk, they bilk uh, regular uh, people. Us. And, yeah. yeah, us. The, the, they, the, oh, the the ones that produce the producers of, yeah, of wealth yeah, you know yeah. so uh they built them and uh as if they're not built enough in in california um <laughs> but uh, yeah i mean you just shake your head i mean at least at least somebody <laughs> it was only a billion it wasn't 10 billion <laughs> yeah. uh, i guess we should they, be grateful <laughs> yeah uh, and th let's let's remind the listeners what a billion dollars is a billion dollars is one thousand million dollars yes. one thousand million. Yeah. so yeah. so um yeah let's you know think about that at least they stopped it before it got higher than that or or maybe it is higher who knows but uh yeah, it's just, uh, it's just, th this is what happens when you have all this stuff that people are going to clamor for, this transferism, uh, is you have fraud, waste, and abuse. And, you know, so the more of it you, you clamor for, the more of the, the negative things you're going to get. And it's going to take a suck wealth from the economy that, you know... <laughs> Then they they shake. Uh, then they go wonder. They blame it on capitalism. You know, it's like, ah, oh, look look at this horrible capitalism. I'm poor. You know, well, shoot. What about your your fifty percent that of your money going out to state, local, and federal taxes? What about that fifty percent right. or forty percent or whatever it is? And um, that, they don't think about that. And and a lot of that is because of this this billion dollar kind of stuff that goes on in in the uh, the governments. Leon. Yeah. You know, you know, I have a little bit of personal experience with this, this, this problem, Jason. And then, what you you've been in prison, or you yeah, built the <laughs> EDD out of a couple thousand bucks? Yes, yes. Uh, I know, I know the guys. They they are my buddies. Oh, by the way, Scott, Scott, Scott Peterson, who, who's that? Um, who killed his wife and kid is apparently involved in this. Anyway, so one day I went to the mail my my mailbox, and got the mail. And as I was going through the mail, there's this mail for this woman by the name of Dorothy something. I don't remember the last name. So I kept on going through the mail. It turns out four pieces of mail were for this woman. And all, all came from the EDD. Um, for where, whoever she is, I don't know who the hell she is. You know, so I went to my tell my wife, you know, this thing looks suspicious. Okay, because we've been living in this house at the time, 21 years. This was in El Grove. 21 years we've been living in this house. And I know the people who lived there previously, that was in the, in the 90s when they left there, when they lived at that house, they had nobody named Dorothy. I'm, I'm almost certain about that. And at this late, 21 years later, I can't imagine they will still be getting mail from EDD at this address. So I went to tell my wife, you know, this sounds like some kind of fraud. I don't, I, I don't know, but this sounds like some kind of fraud. Anyway, I wrote on the thing, this person never lived at this address. I put it back into the... Um, into the into the into the mailbox. Two days later on the news, here it is. People, there are people using people's address to defraud EDD. And I say, oh my God, that's what happened to us. And what they were doing, they're using the address of people who had just put their who had just put their homes for sale or for rent, which we did. We were just leaving. We, were, we had put it up uh, on on Craigslist and on um on um 
on Zillow for rental. And the, the very same, the very same conditions that they described is exactly what we had done. And so people were using our address to do this. So I said, wow, look at that. Yeah. And this is what our efficient government does. And this is what they want to continue, they want to do more of. You know, this is the kind of efficiency they produce. They lose our money and they want more of it to lose. Oh, to yeah, it, it, at the same time, they're they're want to raise taxes in California there at the go. same time as there they hand the money over to prisoners and yes, they hand over prisoners. <laughs> yes. It's, it I mean it's it's like you just can't literally believe it the way that things are mismanaged and you know and, and well I mean I guess people can believe it and that's why there's an exodus of people leaving California and some of these other places. I right. it's it's just tragic because it doesn't have to be this way. And I, you know, I, I don't know how, you know, we, we I, all of us, I think, are frustrated, certainly as more market oriented libertarians that we just keep doubling down on government solutions that are just, you know, are, are really doing us a disservice. But I, I, I don't know. They're not, uh, not, they're not only not only are they service, but they're actually doing they're doing actual harm. When you look at some of the things that are going, take, for instance, the inner cities of America, the inner cities of America. The conditions of the inner city of America is a national disgrace. There's no doubt about that. And, and, and this is where the government is most active, is in, on the inner city. Whether we look at the schools, whether we look at the roads, whether we look at the transfer payments that Tim, Tim, um, Tim been talking about, the government is most active in the inner cities of America. And God, look at the conditions. And who could, who could defend this? But the Democrats do. Who could defend it? Yeah. Well. Uh, it just wasn't done right the first time. Let me take over. I'll show you how it's done. Uh, yeah. Give me that money and I'll do it right this time. <laughs> yeah. Tim, 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 I'm sorry. I didn't I didn't get that message. I'm sorry. I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. <clears throat> well. Uh, you know, uh, speaking of what we're, we're kind of running up close on time, but I, I think there's one other uh, topic we can get in really quick. Um, you know, on, on the COVID front and lockdowns, we're entering a new stage of lockdowns. And one of the things that uh, the governments in a lot of places want to do is curfews. And, you know, the idea that somehow the virus is more aware of what time of the day you're doing something at is kind of is very strange. I don't know. <laughs> something supernatural going on here. But the government seems to think curfews will work. And it, one of the odd things about curfews is you're actually condensing the time a business can operate, which means you're kind of forcing more people into the same time window. But anyway, it's government at giving us another one of their solutions. What do you guys think about that? Well, Jason, oh. Oh, go ahead, go ahead Tim. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tim. Well, I'm I'm usually in, in bed by nine, so and I, but I do get up and get to work uh, at six o'clock. So just just right after the it's it's from ten till five. So right, they gave yeah. they gave me my perfect window there. Um, but in a in a different life uh, where I didn't have to get up so early, I uh, I used to stay out late and uh, went and to nightclubs and went dancing and having a good old time. So. Uh, the, uh, the, you know, yeah, a lot of people didn't show up until 10 o'clock. I mean, uh, so, right. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I would, I, you know, I guess, uh, but I, I don't even know where any bars are open and where there's any dancing like there used to be. Back well, in the call, day. call up Gavin or Newsom. He probably knows all the hot yeah, spots. He probably you know? does. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. And he, and he was there last night too. <laughs> didn't have somebody take a picture of him, I guess, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I, I don't know what's, you know, if it's a big, huge issue. And uh, I think, it, I think we can probably classify this under look what we're doing to curb COVID. We're, yes. We've done everything we can do. Social distance, masks, and now curfews. Curfew, and yeah. and yeah. we're and shuttering businesses. Uh, so, uh, you know, look at all the things we're doing. Aren't I a good boy? What was that? Little Jack Horner sat in a corner eating his curds and whey. Anyway. Is that the maybe that's the fun? Anyway, what a good boy am I? That's part of the the little ditty in there somewhere. So that's just what popped in my head. So 
Hurry up, Leon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we're, we're uh, running right up into the end. Uh, oh, it's time okay. for our well, knucklehead well, noise patrol well, where we well. find something goofy that somebody is saying. And uh, uh, so one of the goofy things that uh, happened recently during the transition as Biden starts to assemble his team, we have uh, Yamichi uh, Alcindor, a PBS White House correspondent. Uh, she was speaking on an NF MSNBC show talking about Biden's cabinet picks. And to be fair, she was attributing this, I guess, in the comment to another Democrat who she doesn't name, but it's just, you know, the most bizarre thing and the idea that they just play it uncritically on the news. But she says, uh, 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 the other thing I'll just say is I was talking to a Democrat who said this almost felt like the Avengers. Now, give it, this is this is like talking about, uh, oh, what, what are some of those uh, people she appointed in the cabinet? Uh, I, I'm trying to think of... Uh, uh, Janet Yellen, uh, the guy yeah, who used then, to be um, this guy Secretary named, of State. Uh, this guy, this John Kerry, as the time is. Uh, yeah, yeah, J J Kerry, Kerry. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so so so, so 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 we have a picture in our image of these stiffs, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> she says, she says, uh, it, it felt like the Avengers. Uh, it felt like we are being rescued from the craziness we've all been through in the last four years. And now here are the superheroes to come and save us all. Oh, yeah. Superheroes? Away, <laughs> did, did any of you, when you were voting, think, gosh, I could vote for the Avengers or superheroes? <laughs> I tell you, you know, the, the, Take the, it the, away. The, wet, the climate will be better. The pollution will disappear. The puppies will be, will be warmer. The grass will be greener. No more, no more hurricanes because the Avengers are here to save us. They're always here to save us, these people. These people with their crazy socialist climate bullshit. Oh, oh God, I did it again. <laughs> Hey, the yes, government, you, you know, gives us gives us the material to make you say that all the time. So I think they, all, they gonna... always do. They <laughs> always do. They always do. But, and, but, and... but 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 the thing is that is the craziness of these people. It will be said in a public in a public forum, and nobody will challenge them on it. This is the insanity that is ongoing. Nobody challenges this, this sort of nonsense. Forgot about curing COVID too. That's right around the corner. Oh, of there course. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. I forgot that thing. You know, my limited brain. Don't don't see these things. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, and the sky is bluer. Yeah. Oh God. I forgot that one too. <laughs> well, I didn't I didn't mention the climate. Remember that? I didn't mention the climate. Yeah, you did. You did. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I, I think you know that uh you know that's that's uh sequel to another bad uh, superhero movie if they're thinking this is obama you know from years yeah. ago but uh, uh unfortunately uh, to catch any more of us you're gonna have to catch our next sequel our next episode uh uh because we're just about out of time here uh but uh thank you all for joining us here at uh, uh libertarian counterpoint podcasts and uh we hope you're enjoying your thanksgiving day weekend and we'll see you at the next show indeed yep. goodbye Toodaloo.